Hello all, it is your host DBJ and uh, I titled this video Down the Drain. Couldn't think of a good one. I thought of like killing them softly. Uh, you know, I thought of some pretty simple uh, pedestrian titles, but we're going to get into how to confound your players, how to force hard decisions for your players. Um, I'm going to try to be as gaming agnostic because I know 5e, you know, the, the Dungeons and Dragons, the most popular role playing game out there, but all these techniques can be used for any role playing game. Just uh, use your imagination. I will try to be agnostic as much as possible, uh, but it, it will be unavoidable. I will bring up 5e quite a bit. Okay. Uh, the first part is what mistakes do we make when trying to deplete the players? Now, I know it sounds like, you know, like making a sausage, like, well, the only reason you're doing these things is to, is to deplete the players, to drain them, to make them less than whole, right? But part of challenge is working against your limitations, right? If you, when you're a sportsman, you want to be in top physical condition, but sometimes people love the sports that require endurance and intelligence and planning and strategy. You know, um, take a look at MMA. Some of the best fighters are not one round knockouts. Yeah, they're the most, the one round knockout people are the most um, uh, visually stimulating, but sometimes they're not the longest lasting because they don't have the endurance to last. They don't have the planning on the strategy. So let's think of some mistakes that we make. Um, any game in which the only resource you're spending is hit points or damage potential or whatever, and the only way to succeed is to roll damage against the enemies, you, you've, you've made a narrow path for your players, right? So take the classic... Um, Someone builds a paladin or a barbarian or something, and uh, everyone else complains around the table. They do the most damage. They always act first. They kill all the bad guys, and my lowly old wizard doesn't get to do anything. Well, that's probably true if the only metric for success is doing damage and going first, right? So let, let's get that out, out of the way right now. Your first thing you need to do is use the environment. Game masters, players, everybody, use the environment. And there are three types of environment that I can think of off the top of my head um, that you can use, right? So you got your natural environment. Your natural environment, um, hot, cold, raining, snowing, muddy, thunderstorms and high winds, um, uh, flash floods, uh, steep hills, rocky crevices, the classic fighting on the rope bridge, fighting on a cliffside, um, climbing up a wall, you know, all those natural things. Um, of course, not the wall, but well, it could be a rocky wall. But anyway, all those natural things, right? Um, fighting in treetops and uh, in swamps and on riverbanks and on the side of waterfalls. Use all of that. Use uh, elevations, use temperature, have all these things combined into the environment. So what other kinds of environment do we have? Well, we have man-made, walls, streets, buildings, um, temples, um, underground dungeons, you know, using catwalks and canals and um, scaffoldings and bell towers and uh, clock towers with moving gears inside of them. Use all of those things. Then we have like a third um, I'd say like a 2.5 environment, um, combining magical environments and environments created by the, in, the act of the encounter itself, right? So a player character f uses a spell, you know, classic spell like grease or like uh, ice storm or, you know, burning hands. Well, does that set the forest on fire? Maybe. You know, have a random roll in there or something. Or, hey, hey, throw that throw that in there. Well, you cast your ice storm. Now the ground 
turns icy for two rounds and then it turns muddy because of you know whatever the hell right so it casts a lightning bolt and they're out in the desert and then it turns part of the sand into like glassy rock or something even if someone misses especially with like spell effects or superpowers or energy beams or something have that alter the environment that you're in right so um maybe the players are going down a uh, a natural ravine and there are enemies you know at the top of the ravine firing down on them and then the enemies are hiding behind boulders and they push the boulders down onto the player characters right maybe it's the opposite the player characters want to ambush an enemy party going through a na uh, narrow valley some of the player characters are firing down on them with you know uh laser cannons or uh bow and arrows or spell effects maybe the other player characters push the boulders down on them use the environment okay so but let's get into some more detail so the goal to reach the goal use the game master should have it cost at least two of these three things to achieve the goal it should cost them time energy and resources preferably all three um of course time can be measured in months days hours or it could be combat rounds energy okay so we think of hit points is the energy like okay whatever if i have hit points left and they don't have any left that's done but we're, we're going to move beyond that and then resources right some people may think of resources like food or water but that's not what i'm talking about we're going to get into what kind of energy and resources we can start to deplete from our players to to give them the option okay not specifically just automatically draining it but to give them the option this is about a uh, resource management and something that uh us old grognardy types understand about playing a first level wizard You're, you've got one magic missile spell when when should i use it right it's a resource management kind of thing so what we want to do is um most most games have skills they don't have skills they probably have ability scores whatever the case may be many games you roll the same die to attack as you do for a skill so why do they have to be separate from each other right allow players or create situations where players can use a skill instead of a combat action to have the same or similar results right so you've got your player character with the barbarian who's punching out you know 100 hit points at a time and he wants to go into attack and you're the lowly wizard and you're like man i don't know what to do well if you're up on that cliff side push some boulders over make make a skill check make a an ability check with your strength make a skill check with your intelligence to you know fire a spell at the right spot to cause an avalanche or something you know allow your players to use the environment or create situations where they have to all right you're in a cave system and uh these lizard-like folk are coming in and it's flooding with water okay so here we go using the environment again and you notice that there is water going out the other end of the cave and if you're not careful it's going to fill with water so the character barbarian i'm going to go into attack hack 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 the other players i don't know what to do well make a roll oh you figure out that if you move some stones you can get the hell up out of there all right so then we're going to go into the second part is having multiple skill or ability checks right so game masters here's a little rule of thumb to adjudicate these kind of things all right have players players who are not engaged in combat and you're requesting of them to make skill checks they should make about as many skill checks as it would take for someone who is in combat to have the same effect all right let's let me make it simple um one player character runs into combat if it takes them two maybe three strikes to take one enemy down then you should ask of your player let's say you are a hacker ask of them two or three skill checks to hack open a locked you know door right so you're in a space station when players got the heavy weapons they're firing at uh at enemies down the hallway bang 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 shooting some weapons boom, boom they're shooting back the hacker goes um hey i want to open up the airlock 
okay. Um, first, make a roll to, you know, um, disable a system and hook up your equipment. You know, plug your hard line, plug yourself in, or hack in through the first layer. Okay, but when you get in, all right, now you got to get through the firewall. Okay, make another roll. Okay, now now you your third roll, you have to find the access to because opening up the airlock is very dangerous. They have a double redundancy to open up the airlock. Okay, you make the third roll and the airlock opens up. Everyone, you know, hold on for your lives. You've already, you know, communicated to your team to have them strap in or something. Those are things that are, are dynamic where your players don't have to pick up a gun, pick up a sword, throw a rock, shoot a bow, but still be engaged in the combat, right? Let's go back to the cave with the stones that need to be moved, right? Well, maybe your strongest player can fight off the, the lizard people, but maybe we, you need that strong person to move those darn stones, right? So let's say the player characters are fighting the stones and a barbarian's like, well, I'm going to get out of combat. I'm going to move those stones. Game Master says, okay, it's going to take you three skill checks. I'll give you three skill checks, maybe even two, whatever, depending on how well you roll. All right, you need to make uh, a strength check against a certain difficulty to move the first stone. Makes the roll. Okay, you move the first stone. A very tiny creature can go through, maybe a familiar or a small drone or something. On the second round, okay, make another roll. Okay, now you move the second stone. Now a small creature can get through, like, you know, a halfling or a gnome or like a, uh, uh, a slitheroid. Um, uh, morph from a uh, eclipse phase or something and then if you move to third stone a human sized being can get through right so setting up these situations where you have um, time limits and drama you can extend out those skill skill roles you can also have skill contests and a skill contest would be some opponent or something else is actively trying to stop you from doing what you're doing. So you can go back to the hacker. They plug into the into the, the door. They want to open up the uh, open up to the vacuum, the firewalls and the systems, or maybe there's even actor a active hackers in there preventing you from opening up the system. It's your role against them. Maybe you need to make two roles: one to get into the system, and the second one to upload your your um your Daemon or something, your demon to take over the system while you unlock the door and keep them occupied or something. All these things, right? So I've mentioned how to. Sorry, my eyes just uh, just itching me. If you're watching this on the video, sorry about that. So now you're wondering, okay, you're making all these skill rolls, but what results can happen from failure to decide what you want to do? And I. I shouldn't have used the word failure because this is a resource management and you want your players to have this resource management. You want them to think, what should I do in this situation? Do I want to stay in combat? Do I want to leave? Um, if it takes me three rounds, will that be more harmful than taking one round? All right. So every game, here's one resource you can drain. Every game has actions. Usually divide it into at least three usually have a combat action, you have a movement action, and you have some third action, whether it's bonus, reaction, simple, um, you know, something like that, right? You have an, uh, usually three. Some games, they'll, they'll break it into actually two, and they'll kind of combine like your movement is kind of split between doing something simple, and then you have your combat action or whatever. Okay, use that as a metric to drain your players, okay? So let's assume you have a system with that, that has these combat movement, whatever, and they are on a swinging rope bridge. You can tell your players, you have the choice to go across this rope bridge. If you spend an action, one of your actions, like a simple action, a simple or bonus reaction could be um, pulling a weapon or, or maintaining your balance, which would be this case. You have to spend your bonus action holding onto the rope to prevent having to make a roll to fall off of this bridge, rope bridge in the wind, okay? So now you have resource management. Okay, I can make a combat action and move, but 
I need to do this other third thing to maintain a spell, that means I have to let go of the rope bridge or no, I'll hold on to the rope bridge, save my combat action and move and say, then use my combat action as a reaction in case I, you get into complicated things, right? Make, make them have to use their actions to do something. You're going across a frozen lake. You've got to use one of your actions to, to maintain your stability. If not, you're going to have to make a roll or you fall down prone, right? You make them burn their actions to make choices in what they're going to do. You could have this escalate. Okay. You're crossing the rope bridge. You need to have an, use one of your actions to hold on. Oh no, the wind is coming. You need to spend two actions to hold on, or I'm going to, you're going to be forced to have to make, you know, athletics or acrobatics or ability score, you know, checks to hold on. And you're going, okay, well, that means I can move, but I can't do a combat or simple. No, I can do a combat, but I can't then move and do a reaction. Oh man, I can only, so, okay, do I want to stay on the bridge and fire at the people on the other side about to cut the rope? Or do I move and not take an action? No, I want to take a dodge action, but okay, I can avoid fire, but that means I can't fire back. Now you're starting to complicate things. Here's another one. Um, generally known in 5e are spell slots, but this can apply to any game. Any game where you have a resource of energy, right? Whether it's like psionic powers or rage or key or chi or bardic inspiration or any of those things where uh, divine channeling of energy ha maybe have a situation, a trap, an environment, a magical effect where they have to spend that energy to do something. And this could make this part of your game seem a little more organic. So for example, um, you have an, an evil idol and the idol's glowing with you know red and black energy and enemies are pouring in and you tell the player, you see the first wave of, uh, of demons or devils or something pour in, and beyond the portal, you see a pit fiend, you know, using its flaming barbed whips, whipping it back and forth, and it puts one foot through the portal. You need to spend three of your spell slots, cleric, to close this, or you need to spend one of your divine channel energies to grasp the, the, the idol to prevent it from allowing more enemies to come through. Use those, have them spend those to, or choose to spend those as a resource management. Now, of course, you're saying, well, as a game master, you're like, well, if I, you know, if I force them to spend it, it's not really a choice. They have the choice to do it or not. And then what you do is you shape the narrative to give them the choice to do it. Okay, cleric, you can heal your friends, or you can spend two spell slots to close the portal this round. What do you want to do? or you need to spend three spell slots, you need to spend one spell slot per round. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm gonna heal them. Okay, more demons come through. All right, well, I'm gonna use one spell slot, spell slot to you know, use my, call upon my deity to help close the portal. Okay, the portal closes one third of the way. What are you gonna do next round? Oh, uh, so-and-so went down, the barbarian. He always running in, 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 into battle and he wants to go fight the, the pit fiend. What do I do? Uh, okay, I use another, uh, spell slot or use my you know divine you know um channeling to you know close it another third of the way okay it's closed two thirds of the way but the barbarian's down now he needs healing all those things right same thing with using rage maybe you you have the barbarian have to spend rage to resist the the influence of a of a a siren or something or a ghost taking over his mind or whatever or maybe there's a there's a special effect in this room that is uh, trying to psychically uh, attack everyone, and you, you know you're in a far future. You're you're one of the lost. You're in the eclipse phase. You've got psychic powers. I'm going to spend part of my uh, you know um, psychic energy to protect all of us and shut you know block our minds from this influence that's trying to take over our minds or whatever. So use those. Now, here's another thing you can train: ability scores. Every game, not every game. Most games have ability scores. Have something happen that drains the ability scores, right? Um, there's a gas leaking into the room. You'll lose a point of strength each round you're in here. What are you going to do? I want to block the entrance where the gas is coming out, okay? Who's going to do it? Are you going to spend 
spin an action to go over there to try to block it. How are you going to try to block the gas coming in? Maybe your characters are swimming under the, underwater and they're getting to the point where they may drown and they start losing constitution or stamina. Um, there's a, uh, th the ground is muddy. You have minus five on your decks or something. You lose some ability to, to maneuver around. Draining the ability scores specifically, right? Bypassing those hit points, poison that, that reduces intelligence, um, an injury that reduces charisma, um, you know, a head injury that reduces wisdom, you know, all those things. They could be temporary, right? So maybe the enemies have a weapon or something that causes a lot. It causes pain, but it doesn't kill you. So it reduces your dex and you start, you know, it causes one 1d4 one loss of dex. Oh no, I'm down to uh, six dex and my character's pretty quick. And you're just racked with pain from these, uh, you know, barbs or poisons or attacks from this creature. And then when the, you know, combat's done, okay, well, it's going to take you a short rest to get it back. Okay, do we have time to rest? No, you really don't because the pressure is on. Add those dramatic elements, right? Um, in specifically 5A, you have hit dice. Make them spend hit dice to do things or resist things. You know, hey, you're a fifth level character. I've got five hit dice. I need to use those to heal, but maybe I need to spend a hit die to hold my breath from the rushing water. And I'm under, you know, I'm trying to struggle when I'm swimming or something. And I failed a constitution roll. And so now I'm drowning. Okay, well, you lose it. You, you have to spend a hit die to do so. Or you're in a cold and it's it's a blizzard and you're trying to fight off the, the Yeti, but it's been four days you've been out there. You, guess what? You're going to lose, you know, every day you're going to lose a hit die till you're down to one, and that's the only hit die you'll be able to use to, to heal during your short rest and long rest or something. You know, have that. In every other game where you have uh, hit points, there's a method to allow you to recover, maybe measured off of your stamina or endurance or something like that. Have a loss of that because of the environment or overextending yourselves or whatever. In 5e, I, I call it the aid system. Uh, that's the advantage, inspiration, disadvantage economy. And you can use that to force a, uh, a choice of resource management for your players based on what you want them to do. Let's go back to the rope bridge, right? So you give them the choice. You're like, you need to get all the way to the other side. And you're pretty sure if you bolt across this this bridge, you can get all the way to the other side in one round. Take it like maybe like a dash action or something like that. Move at double speed. But they're going to fire at you with their arrows and crossbows and javelins. You're going to be at disadvantage if you run across. Now, you could take two rounds. You get to the, to the middle point and then get to the other side. But you'll just be at your, your regular, you know, uh, acrobatics or athletics check to do so. Or if you could be careful, stepping carefully across the bridge, I'll, it, you can, it'll take you three rounds to get across, but you have advantage to dodge their actions. What do you want to do? Right? And then that may change based on what the other players are doing. Right? So someone tries to run across, and they miss maybe an athletics check, and now they're hanging by their hands on the bridge. Do you stop in the middle to help them up to get back on the bridge, or do you just say, well, heck, my character's going to – one hit from a, a, a crossbow bolt, I'm dead. I'm just going to bolt straight across and, and run for cover because I know they're shooting at us from above on flying pterodactyls or something with their javelins, whatever, and I just need to get out of there. Or do you wait? Maybe a friend of yours is in, uh, needs to go across a uh, raging river, and it's you know chest high or above, and the water's moving, and someone, hey, you, you can move fast, but it's going to be disadvantaged, or you can move very carefully. It'll take you... You know, you can move, take one action and get across at disadvantage, take two actions and it's normal, or maybe take three actions with advantage. How do you balance that? Well, I've got to roll three times, but there's a good chance I'll miss it. I'll roll once with disadvantage, but maybe I can cancel it. Wait a minute, where's in, there's inspiration. Can I use my inspiration to maybe cancel out one of the things? Sure, can I use my inspiration for something? Yes, but then you have to measure it. And this that's not even combat yet, right? Use those elements as almost like using all of these elements, like creating your own layer actions, right? Um, 
And lastly, I'm going to start, I'll talk about exhaustion and conditions, right? So in um, many games, including 5e, you have exhaustion levels or you have conditions, blinded, deafened, stunned, um, maybe there's tired or shocked or uh, incapacitated, paralyzed. Maybe there's a situation where there's escalating conditions, right? You're going across a frozen river and it's rushing water. The longer you're in a river, the greater the chance. Okay, if you go across quick as you can, you're only going to get one level of exhaustion. You take your time, you're going to accrue two levels, maybe go into incapacitated or paralyzed or something. Um, maybe it's extremely hot. You're in the desert and you're going to, if you get into combat, you're going to burn up all your resources. You're going to need fluid. Well, you need to get away from these raiders. Are you going to run as fast as you can? Okay, well, you're going to run as fast as you can. You're going to incur like three levels of exhaustion by the time you finish. You sure you want to do that? Well, I got to get away from the raiders. Well, you can turn and attack the raiders. Well, that's going to cost me too. Um, what, what's going to happen there? Well, you'll be dehydrated. If you're dehydrated, uh, you're going to have to make a um, stamina check or you're going to lose strength, right? Oh, wow. If I do that, man. Okay. If you fail two stamina checks, um, you know, your wisdom or your perception is going to go down. You're going to start to hallucinate. Come up with these different variables and start also use the idea of escalation right start to ramp it up okay this one round you're only going to do suffer this one effect if you continue you're going to suffer this effect again or hey if you do this little thing you'll suffer one effect if you suffer this one effect you'll suffer double the effects next time maybe triple the effects maybe they stack on each other hey you keep losing strength doing this thing trying to hold um hold the iron gate back as the, the, the putrid sewer water flows into you and it's just starting to sicken you. Are you still going to hold the gate? Yes, I'm going to hold the gate because it's keeping the zombies back. All right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you. This is like poison, acidic water you're standing in. And, you know, the green zombies with their flesh melting off of them, you know, they're irradiated with, you know, radiation and stuff like that. They don't care. I'm going to stay here. All right, well, to get all your friends passed is going to cost... It's going to be three rounds unless somebody helps you out. No, I'll stay. Okay, well, that's three rounds. Your strength's going to drop. Come up with these dynamic things. Now, I'm going to end this with, please check out Critical Hit Publishing on uh, Drive Through RPG. The link is below down in the dungeon. And that is a technique that I used for um, helping to write these uh, cinematic environs. Um, basically, pick an environment, pick... Of an encounter that you want to place your characters in, whether they are going through the Arctic or the desert or mountains or they're on airships, whatever the case may be, we've, we've got things coming out. The techniques that I generally explain to you are more specific and explicit in these books um, just to help people flesh out these dynamic encounters. You know, traps suck. But puzzles are great. Traps that save, oh, you missed it, you're hurt, that sucks. Hit points, you, everybody's got that and start to heal that. But start coming up with these other dynamic spend, do I take, do I leave, you know, how do I manage my resources? Every character has these resources. Use them against your players, have them make hard decisions, make dynamic encounters. Um, I know I do. Those of you who are out there who own these cinematic books, uh, cinematic environment books uh, from us, whether in PDF or physical form, you'll notice that um, there that is absolutely a method. We even have chapters in there called If Then. If the player does this, then this happens. If the player chooses to do one thing, then this other thing happens. So do they choose to go across the rope bridge slowly? Is that a smart thing? Is it not? It doesn't matter. It depends on what they want to choose and, and how dynamic you want the encounter. Some people may feel that it's, it's worth it to spend this resource to get this other benefit from it. So anyway, it's DBJ, always trying to be creative, not trying to be destructive with anybody, and I'm out. Thank you.